Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning everyone I hope you are doing fine today And we are from group 4 We will be presenting our work about Levis Rouse Structuralism Next, I'm going to introduce our group Our group is consists of 8 people And that is include the first one is Muhliha Cindy, second is Muhammad Gailani, third is Muhammad Fakri Muyasar, fourth is Rahmat Dani Sembiring, fifth is Yesika Azaria Limbong, sixth is Nur Hikmah, seven is Aan Fajriansa, eight is Fikri Ramadana, and the last one is Denny Ilham Pratama. And the first material is going to be presented by me. Muhammad Jelani. We are going to discuss about the biography of Claudio Levi Strauss. Levi Strauss, born in November 28 at 1908, was a French anthropologist and one of the most prominent social scientists of the 20th century. He is best known as the founder of structural anthropology and for his theory of structuralism, Levi Strauss was a key figure in the development of modern social and cultural anthropology and was widely influential outside of his discipline. Levi Strauss remained in the US until 1948, joining a community of fellow Jewish scholars and artists escaping persecution that included linguist Roman Jacobson and surrealist painter Henry Breton. Levi Strauss helped found the École Libre des Hautes Études, is a French school for free studies with fellow refugees, and then served as a cultural attach to the French embassy in Washington D.C. Levi Strauss returned to the France in 1948, where he received his doctorate from the Sorbonne. He quickly established himself within the rank of French intellectual and he was the director of studies at the Ecole des Hauts Etudes at the University of Paris from 1950 to 1974. He became the chair of social anthropology at the Femme College de France in 1959 and held the position until 1982. Lepis Rouse remain active after his retirement and continue to publish works on a variety of topics nearly until his death. He died in 2009, only a few weeks before his 101st birthday. Hello, my name is Nur Hikmah. Right now we're going to talk about contribution. During his stay at the New School for Social Research in 1940, the famous Russian formalist Roman Jacobson introduced Claude Levi Strauss to the world of Ferdinand de Saussure, the legendary Swiss linguist. Strauss foresaw the importance of semiology for cultural analysis and studied the coded relation linked to the social interaction. Levi Strauss advocated that language preconditions human culture as evidence in the symbolic order of religious and social life and aesthetic. He believed that cultural patterning is influenced by the huge reservoir of unconscious and universal structure of the mind. The most important contribution made by Levi Strauss during his anthropological investigation was the difference between hot and cold societies. Cultures in Western Europe that altered significantly and remained open to greatly divergent influence were termed as hot, while the cultures that changed marginally over time were cold. An ideal example of a cold society was said to be the Amazonian Indians. He suggests a savage mind and a civilized mind shared the same structure and that human characteristics are the same in every region of the world. Main idea and concepts. Claude Levi Strauss is best known for his theory of culture and mind that revolutionized modern anthropology. 
He showed that culture is a system with underlying structures that are common to all societies regardless of their differences. Through his analysis, he showed that patterns of structure including behavior and talk are universal to all societies. And rejecting the concept of primitive and modern mind, arguing that all men have the same intellectual potential. According to Levi Strauss, all people think of the world around them in terms of binary opposites such as up and down, life and death, etc. And therefore, every culture can be understood in these terms. Levi Strauss' ideas were heavily influenced by the so-called structural linguistics, especially the work of the Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure. 1857 until 1930. His works, however, also reveal the influence of Roman Jacobson and Franz Pons, both of whom he met in New York City. Other notable influences include Emil Durkheim, 1858 until 1917, and Marcel Mauss, 1872 until 1915. Definition of Structuralism Structuralism in Cultural Anthropology, the school of thought developed by the French anthropologist Claude Lévi-Strauss, in which culture viewed as systems are analyzed in terms of structural relation among their elements. According to Lévi-Strauss theories, Universal patterns in cultural system are product of the invariant structure of the human mind. Structure for Levi Strauss referred exclusively to mental structure. Although he found evidence of such structure in his far ranging analysis of kinship, pattern in mythology, art, religion, ritual, and culinary tradition. The basic framework of Levi Strauss theory was derived from the work structural linguistic. In Levi Strauss system, the human mind is viewed as a repository of a great variety of natural material, from which it selects pairs of elements that can be combined to form diverse structure. Pairs of opposition can be separated into singular elements for use in forming new opposition. In analyzing kinship's terminology and kinship systems, the accomplishment that first brought him to preeminence in anthropology, Levi Strauss suggests that the elementary structure or unit of kinship on which all systems are built is a set of four types of organically linked relationships brother sister, husband wife, brother son, and mother's brother, sister son. Levi Strauss stressed that the emphasis in structural analysis of concepts must be on human consciousness, not on objective ties of design or consanguinity. For him, all forms of social life represent the operation of universal laws regulating the activities of the mind. His detractors agreed that his theory could be neither tested nor proved and that his lack of interest in historical process represented a fundamental oversight. Levi-Strauss, however, believed that the structural similarities underlie all cultures and that an analysis of the relationships among culture units could provide insight into innate and universal principles of human thought. Example application of theory structuralism Levi-Strauss Levi-Strauss applies his structural method to various analyses, social symptoms, or practices. One of them is against the prohibition of incest. According to Levi-Strauss, the prohibition of incest is same as universal as language. Anthropology has come a long way try to explain the prohibition with various arguments, but Levi-Strauss considered all of these theories unsatisfactory to explain the universal nature of prohibitions this in chest. According to him, the prohibition is a negative aspect of a positive phenomenon. People are obligated to marry outside their own clan. 
The common exogamy married women from other clans have as a negative result the prohibition against endogamy married a woman from the same clan. That means that it is prohibited to marry women among my relatives also cover my duty to pass on the women in my clan to others so that they are in turn will give their women to me. The basis of social relations and the basis of culture is exchange. And marriage is a model principle in the field of exchange. Inches is strongly and universally rejected because to deny the prohibition is to uproot the pillars of society. Exchange is a natural law for social life. With the prohibition of inches, a culture was born. As Levi Strauss put it, the prohibition of inches is a fundamental step for, with, and above all, a transition from nature to culture takes place in that step. With that explanation, Levi Strauss felt he had revealed a process that was takes place at the unconscious level of the human psychology. And that's all from us, Group 4. We would like to say thank you.